this is Walter Leite, and in this video, I will show you how to evaluate covariate balance using propensity score weights. Um, this video is um, for chapter three of the book, Practical Propensity Score Methods Using R. Um, and we, it's part four of a series of videos about that chapter. Um, and the, the code can be found in practicalpropensityscore.com. So the first part of this example um, is to load the data. So um, I'm loading the original data here as well, a data set that has the propensity score weights already calculated. And the, the first file also has the covariate names that you um, evaluate covariate balance for, as well as a formula that was used to estimate propensity scores. Now, the, the covariate balance stage is critical of propensity score analysis because here we're going to evaluate if um, the for each covariate, if the mean of that covariate for the treatment group is similar to the mean of the covariate for the control group. Um, and if we can find that the means are similar for all covariates, we conclude that propensity score, propensity score weighting um, succeeded in removing selection bias due to observed covariates. Now, um, before we can do the covariate balance evaluation, we need to calculate the final weight. So the final weight is the product of the propensity score weight for the ATT and the sampling weight, because since this data comes from uh, the educational longitudinal study, there is a sampling weight there. Let me show you in the data set here. So I have several weights um, that for me to use, including the weight for the ATT and the weight for the ATE. Um, so I will run is to calculate this final weight for the ATT. Okay. Now for covariate balance, I'm using a package called Twang. Uh, that package is very helpful for propensity score weighting. It also can help with propensity score estimation um, using a data mining method called generalized boosted modeling. Now, in the so I'll first load the, the package to use require or library. Okay, it's loaded. Now, within the function to hang, I will use the within the package to hang, I will use the function bowstat. Um, which is for to obtain a, a covariate balance table. And here I have uh, the data set as an argument. VARS, I put the object covariate names, which is just the vector of with the names of the covariates. Um, if I type here covariate names, you can see is a list of covariates that I'm trying to balance. The treatment variable is called treat, uh, and I declare here W O is the final weight, which combines the sampling weight with the propensity score weight. Um, so this is the final weight, and then um, I also declare what the sampling weight is for the for the data set, the early uh, educational longitudinal study, which is B Y S T U W T. Um, the trying to estimate the A T T. Okay, and it's multinomial means do you have more than one, uh, more than treatment and control? Do you have multiple versions of the treatment? And in this case, we don't. We only have treatment and control. Okay, so I will run this. And it takes a little bit to run. And 
and um, once it runs, it will provide the list. Okay, so it finished running, and it it provides a list um, with a data frame within it. Uh, so I want to remove just this data frame. Um, so I will use this to remove just the results out of it and make it a data frame. Okay. Now I have a data frame, a balance table, and it looks like this. I have the covariates here. If the covariates are categorical, it will list all the categories of the covariate, such as this one here, BYSTLNG. Two has four categories. If the covariate is continuous, um, find you a continuous one here. It would just be one line um, if it's a continuous covariate. Um, I think those are all categorical. Now, uh, so for a categorical covariate, uh, this column TX mean is the proportion in the treatment group. If it's a continuous covariate, is the mean of the treatment group. Then this is the standard deviation for the treatment group. CT MN is the mean or proportion of the treatment group. So since these covariates are categorical, these are all proportions for the, for the control group. And this is just the deviation for the control group. Uh, STD, EF, F, SZ is the standardized mean difference. So we will evaluate covariate balance based on standardized mean difference. Here it shows a statistical test of this difference and a p-value. We will ignore the statistical test and the p-value because um, statistical tests are making inferences about the population, but covariate balance is a property of the sample. Therefore, uh, inference, statistical uh, hypothesis tests like these are not appropriate for covariate balance evaluation. So we will base our covariate balance evaluation on this standardized effect size. Uh, so we want this to be as small as possible. There are multiple criteria that has been proposed. There is a criteria of 0.1 standard deviations. So covariate balances would be adequate if these values are less than 0.1 standard deviations, um, in absolute value. Um, there is another criterion um, that is 0.25 standard deviations. Um, now I am an educational researcher, so I use the criteria of the What Works Clearinghouse of the US Department of Education. And the criterion that they use is 0.05 standard deviations um, or 0.25 standard deviations if you add covariates in the outcome model as well. So these all seem to be very small, less than 0.05, um, but we'll, we'll check in more detail. So we'll close this table. Um, so the summary here will show me um, what was the summary statistics for my balance. So the, the worst covariate balance was 0.057. So if I'm aiming at covariate balance being adequate, if, it's less, if the standardized mean difference is less than 0.05, here we have at least one covariate that exceeds that. Um, and I can also um, do a table here to find out how many covariates exceed 0.05. So I have four covariates that exceed 0.05. And here I'm indexing the row names of the balance table to find out which covariates exceed 0.05. So we have these covariates here that exceed 0.05. Um, and note that this is the category 98 of this covariate, but then these covariates here are 
covariates that are missing data indicators that I had added to the model. Um, now I can save the covariate balance table in a, as a common delimited file, which I can use later in Excel to make it APA format and put directly on a paper. So that's how you evaluate covariate balance using the Twang package in R.